So in this video, let's take some of the concepts we've learned about substitution reactions, in particular SN2 reactions, and apply those concepts to figuring out what's going to be the product of each of these different reactions. So take, take what you know about how SN2 reactions work and what's the most important factor to remember for SN2 reactions and see if given these problems, you can figure out what the dominant product of each of these SN2 reactions is going to be. So maybe press pause, work on these yourself when you're ready, press play and we'll go through them. Okay, so let's look at this first question. And actually, before we even go into these questions, just, just remember a review of how the SN2 reaction works. Remember, the SN2 reaction goes through a backside attack. So that means that the nucleophile is going to approach the backside of the atom, uh, which has the leaving group, and displace the, the leaving group from that direction. And that also means that the predominant barrier for the SN2 reaction is steric hindrance. Steric hindrance meaning steric bulk or anything which can get in the way of the nucleophile doing its backside attack and then for that reason we tend to think that primary is going to be faster than or it's important to know that primary tends to be faster than secondary which is considerably faster than tertiary for, for our purposes it doesn't really happen very much at all. So that's the key thing to keep in mind when we think about the SN2 reaction is that really you're going to be looking at steric hindrance. Okay, so with that in mind, let's have a look at this first problem here. So let's maybe just number things to, to keep track of, of where everything is. It's not official numbering, it's just let's keep track of things numbering. And analyzing this molecule here, and we have two potential leaving groups. We have our, our chloride here and our chloride here, or chlorine here and chlorine here. And if they're displaced, they'll become chloride. Chloride's negative. And our nucleophile could therefore, which is CN minus the cyanide anion, could then attack either carbon one or carbon five. So if we look at carbon five, we ask ourselves, okay, is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? That's probably one of the best questions to ask yourself. And we see that it's attached to two carbons. It's attached to carbon four and carbon six. So this would make it secondary. And then carbon one is attached only to carbon two and it's not attached to any other carbon, so this is primary. Therefore, primary versus secondary, primary is gonna be faster, so therefore, when we're drawing the mechanism of this reaction, the cyanide anion, the lone pair, is going to attack carbon one in a, in, from the backside, and then we're gonna displace the chloride ion, and that's gonna give us this product here, so four, five. So that would then give us Let's put the chlorine. This chlorine is going to be here. And here we're going to form carbon-carbon. So carbon 1 to Cn. That is the bond that's going to form. So let's put that in. And we're going to break carbon chlorine. So we're going to have a Cl. We're going to have a Cl minus bond here. Or bond, I should say. Cl minus group. And the there's going to be a new lone pair on that chloride anion that wasn't there before. Might draw that in green. Uh, so three lone pairs and then an extra lone pair because it gains one from this, this arrow here. Okay, so that's the first reaction. Primary wins over secondary. Okay, let's look at the second reaction here. So taking this molecule, we're going to treat it with uh, sodium cyanide, same, same as we did before. And we could have used any other number of different nucleophiles here. Just this one was the most... Um, I just picked this one at random, essentially. So we have the cyanide anion that can attack either carbon one. Well, actually, let's number this one, two, three, four, five. It can attack carbon one where there's a, a bromine, or carbon five where there's a bromine. And we're asking ourselves, okay, is this primary, secondary, or tertiary? And in this, look at carbon one. Carbon one is attached to one carbon, so this would be primary. And carbon-5 is also attached to one carbon. Now, so they're both primary, so we would normally think that they would occur uh, roughly the same rate. And that would, that's commonly the case, but one has to sort of go through and ask a second question uh, when, when you note that both your primary positions, both you're looking at two different primary positions. And that is that, is there one primary position which might be a little bit more sterically hindered than the other? 
And in that case, it can be helpful to look at the carbon next door. And if you look at the carbon next door, you see that there's these two methyl groups. And whereas here, there's only hydrogens on the carbon adjacent to carbon four. And although the steric hindrance effects on the uh, carbon that's attached to the bromine, so what we call sometimes the alpha carbon is the most important, the steric effects on the beta carbon can be very important too. So knowing that steric hindrance is the big barrier to substitution or SN2 reactions, it also helps to look at the beta position as well. And in this case, this is actually going to be more hindered. It's going to be more hindered and therefore it's going to be slower. So if we're only adding one equivalent of Na CN, so this is going to be slower. So we're adding one equivalent of NaCN, that means it's going to attack at carbon. What we're drawing is carbon 5 here. So let's draw out the product of this reaction. So we would, well, let's draw the mechanism first. So we would say a lone pair comes from CN, attacks carbon 5, and then another pair of electrons is going to go breaking the carbon to bromine bond, and we're going to move and put a lone pair on this bromine here, and that's going to break that bond. So one, two, three. And so then we would have a new bond between carbon, we just draw it as CN, that's okay. And then we'd have BR, and let's draw three lone pairs. And we have a new lone pair on our bromine, makes it a bromide anion. So you notice that anions tend to have that last name ide. It's common for, for that. So then we have one, two, three, four and five. Okay, so that is the final product for this second reaction. Okay, so the last question here is we're looking at carbons one, two, three, and four. So we have two potential leaving groups here. We have a chloride and we have another chloride. Now again, what are they primary, secondary, or tertiary? And carbon one, well, it's only attached to one carbon. So it's primary and carbon four is only attached to one carbon, but so it's also primary, but there's something special about carbon one and notice that carbon one is part of a double bond and carbon one is therefore not an not sp3 hybridized. It's actually sp2 hybridized and there's an important rule to keep in mind. When we're talking about the SN2 reactions and that is that SN2 reactions only occur on sp3 carbons okay they only occur on sp3 carbons not sp2 so even though we've got a chloride ion and we've got a chloride which is which is a part of our molecule and again it, it appears to be on a carbon which has only one other carbon attached this is actually an sp2 hybridized carbon it's, it's part of an alkene sn2 reactions don't occur on alkenes they only occur on uh, alkyl groups so alkyl chlorides so in that case it's got to be on this reaction here on carbon 4 and if we're going to draw the pair of electrons here you should see the pair of electrons from the cn minus would go to carbon 4 and then we break the carbon to chlorine bond and that would give us let's draw this product here so we'd have Cl and then we'd have carbon carbon and then Cn and that gives us one two three and four and as well we would have a new lone pair on that chlorine which wasn't there before. So um, let's draw that new lone pair as green and maybe the other ones as some other color. So pink, sure, why not? So chloride ion, so that is our leaving group in this reaction. Okay, so this substitution reaction, just to review, this substitution reaction occurred on this top one. This is primary, this is secondary, so primary wins over secondary. So important, and if this of course was tertiary, well, it would still win. That would be 
Um, that's one of the, the key question to ask is primary, secondary, tertiary, and primary is going to be faster. In the second case, they're both primary, but one of them, one of the primary positions has a more hindered beta position. More hindered beta position has these two methyl groups. And so therefore, it's actually going to be slower than carbon, the one on carbon five would be. So that's why this is our major product. In this last one, we were comparing two carbons. Each were attached to only one carbon, but this one was on an alkene, and whereas this one was an alkyl. So alkyl is always going to win over alkene. We can't do substitution reactions on alkenes. So that's how we apply some of the, the, the key concepts of the SN2 reactions, particularly the substrate, to understanding the products of SN2 reactions.